Welcome back to Black Clover Anime Review, episode number 41. This arm being the 91st episode of anime, Meliana versus Rel to the Soil, and the 211th chapter of the manga, The Final Attack. Yes, this episode adapts chapters 136 to 138. Yeah, so in this episode, they've already covered the first, uh, as of this episode, they've already covered the first 142 chapters of the manga. Yep. So currently, as of the, with the most recent chapter that came out, there's only about, oh, I'd say, I think it's like 69 left. Yeah, 69 chapters left to be adapted for the anime. Mm-hmm. And no, I do not believe the stupid rumor that the show might end by October. Because Studio Parrot has not said anything about it. But what about this episode? This episode picks up right where episode 88 left off. Yep, after taking two episodes off to deal with what's going on at the Black Bull headquarters, this one is just, well, basically Meliona taking on Reyes for the whole episode. There's a brief interlude to see what... Well, Lux's team is up to take up some goons. Him and Matt M- 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 Miliano's creepy brother who keeps, Oh, I'm so beautiful. This is beautiful. Yep. Yep. Just basically dealing with all the goons, no problem. And, like, Yuno's group, which is consists of him, Meliona, Faust, and the plus size guy. I think it was... No, it was not him. Uh, you also have Noel's team, which is of another guy from a different team. And I don't remember who they were two were on this team. I, I think it's her brother, and I think it was like one other person's team. I don't remember who it was. And pretty much the whole episode, you have just Melian taking on. Well, first she takes takes care of a couple of guys, no problem. And then all of a sudden, she's these two Ashes. Yeah, she's two Ashes. It's like, she's like, figure out which one's the real one. Simple. By nearly burning the death. Yes. Anyways. Yeah, nearly burning him to death. And figures out the one on the right is in fact the fake one. And it's the third eye member. Asta recognizes him right away because he saw him back in the Ark, the Iron Man Knight's son. The one where they kidnapped a bunch of kids. Yes, Bailey, what can I do for you? Sure. Need something? Close the door, please. Anyways, yes. And then she proceeds to basically fight him pretty easily. Of course, he's copying magic. For, well, first, one of the first magic he copies aside from Grace. Apparently, he took a time to copy Yumi's magic. Y- you know, ma- uh, yeah, Yumi's magic. Where he brings out a freaking katana and try to use a slash. He's not only copying that magic, copies magic of the former captain of Purple Orcas. He copies, look like Lux magic. Fauna's magic, and like a whole boatload of other magic, including Sally's magic. Yes, yeah, and Sally's name featured in the episode. Nine featured new chat in the manga. Nope. Yeah, he uses a whole bunch against. I don't know. And. Pretty much. <laughs> he's like, next. Yeah, this, yeah, these spells are nothing. She even tried copying Asa's anti magic. And it did nothing. Because it's bogus. It's not the actual thing. He did the sheep feed him pretty easily. Heck, a couple times, I was calling it, like, calling the episode, like, what? Like, what's this? It's like, first she's copying Goku, and then she's oh, yeah, it's some special moves that she can use. And, of course, it's also this thing called Territory manga, Mana, which she uses, and apparently Yuna uses it as well. That's why she's so freaking powerful. And it kind of explains why she's so powerful in this episode. Apparently, the food in the capital was too good for her, so she decided to go out in the wild and eat wild boar. And she's pretty much is for 300 days a year. I'm thinking, eating all that, I'm surprised she's running weight. She probably, because of living on the wild for so long, she probably built, like, if you see the size, she's freaking huge. I'm going to think about weight size. She's, like, very muscular. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and apparently, 
Zor actually kind of, well, heard rumors about how strong she is, figure out how she was this strong, and Ash is, like, taking notes, like, first he, like, the, the thinking, like, seeing the whole vanishing, that's something the cat purple, former cat purple Oka's used, and he's like, can I steal some of her moves? <laughs> I mean, first he, he tries to copy, you you know, uh, you mean, now we're trying to copy Mil Miliona, okay, and finally he dressed her by her proper name, though in his thoughts, not the actual saying, but yeah, absolute fun episode. Also, you know, basically, now it's not you, it's, um, uh, Mel Melonia, the Noel's cousin, she notices there's a strange writing on the wall, and apparently someone's on the floor, so all of a sudden, uh, Belle, the little fairy who's basically, you know, kind of assistant, notices some familiar magic. And we see, I think this is supposed to be Vonchance, possibly? It's not clear who this is, just some guy in white. Yeah. Oh, and by the way, that's how the episode ends. Now, I kind of thought, though, normally they would have, like, a Petty Clover moment, like in, like a lot of these episodes. But, no. No Petty Clover moment. I'm like, that's interesting. They stopped doing those? Yeah, it was, like, really weird. Oh, yeah, and also, Melon's also copying Luffy with his gum gum barrage. But, <laughs> No, yeah, well, that's not real, actually. It's just some special move she knows. Basically, it looks like she's having, like, 20 fists to the guy. Excuse me. Now we have the 211th of the manga. First, we have this one of a cover. I think it's from the cover of Wiggly Shonen Jump. has this cover image of Asha Noel in traditional Japanese attire. Basically, so everyone looks like New Year's. Yeah, and then we have the character pole. We have Seki and Nero. Yeah, and that's the character where she's like, he's a 54 place? Like, what? 54th? And she's a 16th. And here's who basically hit the pole. Asus in first. Second is Yumi. Third is Noel. Let's see. Mimosa. Yeah, that's the name. Mimosa. I can't pronounce the name. Mimosa. Yeah, that's who's Noel's cousin. She's in eighth place. Tied with luck, surprisingly. You know in fourth. The adorable Charmy is in seventh. Charlotte, the the beautiful woman she is, she's tied for sixth place. She's in sixth place. Fifth place is Meliana. Tenth place is Goosh. Yep. Really interesting character pull. Yeah, but it's so adorable the fact that Charmy's in seventh. I like the fact that Charlotte's in eighth. Despite the fact she's not featured very much. Probably also because, well, in the anime, in the dub, she's voiced by Colin Clickenbeard. You know, Yumi is probably popular, gets high, because one, he's voiced by frickin' Christopher Sabant, and two, because people love him. Yep. I kind of wish Charlotte featured a little bit more. Yeah, but in the current arc, she was last seen together with Yumi. Jeppa starts off with seeing Nero basically kind of flashback, flashback to something involving Asha, and Asha taking on the demon, which she was the devil. Yeah, and you, have, you know, basically, the yeah, so it's about uh, being the wizard, like, and leave you behind for power. Yeah, he's they're like slicing and dicing at the demon. He gets, and of course, you know, uses spirit dive. Yeah, I prefer spirit drive than spirit than spirit dive, because it sounds more it sounds more cool of a name than spirit dive. It sounds kind of bad of a name, but I kind of prefer drive. But dive is the official name. Yeah, someone actually corrected me in the comments about that. The fact when 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 you know made his anime debut, this thing I referred to the thing as Spirit Drive. I was corrected, basically saying it's the name of the move is basically Spirit Dive. I like Drive better because it sounds cooler. But I'm not going to basically have a argument over a guy's move of a spell. Yeah, of course, you know and Asha basically are still slices as a demon. We a lot of chapters, and we see. Briefly looks like a flashback of you know flashback to the Wizard King. Saying that I had an eye on you. And we see it looks like Yeah, him and Charlotte are slicing at some uh parts of the demon. And then we see the first Wizard King, you know, Lasat, Nero, and Asha basically and notice that Yumi's dark magic has sliced the devil in half. And he's basically about to come back together. And of course, Nero's like pushing him. It's like, 
I've sealed the damage to his body. Now see his slow force enter Asha. Die, perish, disappear. And he just slices like and, and Kriora's like, Weren't you become the magic emperor? And he's like, Yeah. And he just slices right through it looks like Yeah, it looks like he just slices him right through his heart. Yep. And yeah, right here, right now, I'm going over I'm go, coming up, I'm going to my limits. And that's the chapter ends. Really awesome way to end the chapter. Yeah, I think a devil, I think this devil is definitely dead after being sliced up like this. I think, you know, I think Asha probably got his heart. So, yeah, he is dead. Yeah, so we can kind of say this arc is kind of just about over because they killed off this character. Which I hope they confirm in the fact in the next chapter he is definitely dead. I hope so because we don't need this arc track out for such longer as this. Excuse me. Uh, this arc is going on now officially. This is this chapter marks the seventy. This is the seventy ninth chapter. This arc, yes, it's going on for a long time. Weekly wise, you can kind of say this is going on for almost two years, and this already is the longest arc of the entire manga. The anime just started dapping this thing, like just a few ch like, if I remember, I think it was. Let's see. One, two, three, four. About seven, eight chapter, eight episodes back. But they kind of stretched out the first chapter of this arc, mainly because the arc, it's the current arc of the manga. So now they're back doing the thing of adapting like three chapters per episode. But who knows how long this is going to last for. They might do an episode where they just do a filler at some point. Because right now, because they just adapted chapter 138. Basically, overall, they got to 142, and this is chapter 211. Mm -hmm. So that means as of right now, there is exactly 69 chapters left to adapt. This could last for pretty much the rest of the year. But I have also not heard any confirmation that the series is going to be ending. I heard a rumor earlier this year that, that the series might be ending, or at least that there's some kind of plan happening after chapter 200. I haven't heard much thing else about it. Yeah, but just a rumor I heard. Yeah. I'm going to give this chapter a 9.5 out of 10. Mainly because the fact they finally killed off this guy. Finally. After apparently killing him off apparently several chapters back. But apparently he was in reform because they couldn't get his freaking heart. Asha definitely had his heart. So, since his damage has been sealed by Nero. Yeah, he's dead. He's definitely dead. There is no way he can survive having his heart sliced in half. Because... I mean, it's like, okay, his heart survives. I was like, what? Did the writer of the manga rip this whole idea off from Friday the 13th, the final chapter? Because that kind of also happened in the film as well. Despite the fact he destroyed Jason Voorhees' body, his heart was still around. Until he got a proper body. Yeah, I think that the writer of the series must, must have either ripped off the idea from Friday the 13th, not the final chapter, it's, uh... It, it's uh, Jason Goes to Hell. Yeah, it's a Night Friday 13. It's Jason Goes to Hell, The Final Friday. Either ripping off from that idea or probably taking loose inspiration for it. But why would you take inspiration what's considered to be the worst film of the entire Friday the 13th series? The only thing interesting about that film is this ending. Yes, that's the only thing I can think of about that film was good, aside from the fact the loose connection to Army of Darkness, which apparently. The only reason why they made that connection is because the guy who did the props for, for that film also worked on the Evil Dead series. Yep. But yeah, that's the end of this particular review. I mean, it's definitely a good chapter nonetheless, but yeah. Ripping off, not for anything, final chapter, it's like, yeah, it's actually Jason Goes to Hell. If you're going to correct me in the comments, it's Jason Goes to Hell. That's basically what the I'd, whole thing of the heart surviving from a type of demon yeah jason Voorhees, for some reason in the ninth film was described as a demon or at least a deadite for some reason even though he's a freaking human with supernatural strength yeah it's particularly very weird mm -hmm. so yeah that's it for this particular view my next review to do next review of the of the 10th james bond film you get my thoughts on that soon okay do see you there bye